Good day and welcome to Customer Effects Training Webinars. My name is Dale Richter and today we're going to be talking about the SalesLogix web client and creating new tickets. The tickets are functionality within SalesLogix that allow the user to create problem tickets on customer issues. And then on those tickets, we can create ticket activities, provide resolutions, and build our knowledge base. So there's a lot involved in creating and using a ticket. Let's not waste any time and let's get right to it. I'll switch right over to my web client. Hold on just a second. Okay, so here we are. I've switched over to my web client and we're currently looking at the account uh, bank distributors as you see up on the top of the page here. So you'll notice I did not go directly to activities and I do not have activities on this nav bar, but you'll see if I go to the service nav bar, I do have tickets there. So, but I'm going to start out back here on my account because I want to create a ticket for this account. So, for that to automatically fill in, I want to start right on the account record or I can also start on the contact record. So, I'm just going to go up to the top of the page here and click on new, and then I'm just going to choose new ticket. When I do that, it gives me the insert ticket dialog box here. You'll notice that it automatically populated the account name now for me with the contact name, Carl. And then the next field we have there is the contract. Now I know I don't have any contracts on this one, uh, but we could have service contracts and we'll talk about that in another webinar. So now I want to choose the area, category, and issue for this ticket. If I click on the magnifying glass there, you'll see here that we have different areas that we've set up prior to uh, creating tickets here. So if I choose that this is a hardware problem, once I do that, it populates the category. And then I can choose a category. I'm going to say hard drive here. And once I choose hard drive, then the issue is also populated. And I'm just going to choose corrupt there and click on OK. Up in the upper right hand corner then we have the source. Uh, where did we get this ticket or this issue from? Was it phoned in? Was it a walk-in email fax? I'm just going to say email here. And the status is going to start out at open. We'll leave it there. We can set an urgency to that, whether it's medium, high, or low. I'll leave it set at medium. And then we can choose a needed date. When do they need to have this resolved by? I'll just choose uh, about halfway through the next week there and assign date is today's date. Now assign to currently is assigned to everyone but we could assign this to an individual or to a team of individuals. So here's the individuals and if I go back here here's the team. So I could choose like if I had a special uh, service team I could assign this ticket right to them. I'm just going to choose Midwest here. Up in the upper right hand corner, we do have some check boxes for whether this issue was resolved on the first call, uh, whether this was submitted for speed search or approved for speed search. Now, I'm logged in as the administrator, that's why I have both of those check boxes, but normally just an end user would have submit for speed search and maybe one user, or one manager would have the approved for speed search, so they would actually be approving it. Now, down in our subject line here. We can choose the subject. Um, I'm just going to put in hardware hard drive here because that's what we chose up on the top. And then in the description I'll just type in something like uh, won't boot up. So there we have our description. Over on the right here there's a little clock here. If we wanted to date and time stamp that we could also let me move that down once and if I click on my date and time stamp you'll see there that it actually puts in my username the date and time and then below that is my comment there you can do the same with the resolution field and also with the resolution field then you also have the speed search um, so if we chose a resolution from the speed search it would automatically populate the resolution there now if we, this is a first time resolution, excuse me, 
we would type that resolution in here and that's when we could actually submit that resolution for speed search. Down in the bottom I have some space for internal comments if I want to put some. And now I'm just going to go ahead and save this dialog box so our ticket is actually saved and then it'll bring us to the detail view of that ticket. So now it's given that ticket a number we see up on the top there. And here's the detail view, so the account name, contact name, the phone numbers. Uh, we still have our area, co our, our area category and issue, our status and our urgency, when it was assigned, who it was assigned to. And we could also put in an email address there if we had a specific email we want to send uh, information back to. Now we'll go through some of these other uh, tabs down at the bottom of the screen in other webinars. But here we do have ticket activities is one of them that as we work on this ticket, we can create new activities here. Um, and if I just put in here test activity, and I can save that, that gets saved right down in the bottom there into our ticket activity. So every time we work on that ticket, we want to put in our ticket activities, what we've done for each step of the way. We have to go if we have to go back in and edit that, we just click on the edit here and bring that box back up again. And there it is. So there we could put in a charge type, a rate if we wanted to, our total total labor and here's our comments that we put in earlier so we could change those comments. Also down in the bottom here, if you're using activity parts, we could assign parts to this too. So if we replace the hard drive in this case, we could go in there and, and add a part to the ticket activity parts. Then I'm just gonna save that again, and brings me back to the main screen for the detail view of this ticket. So as we continue to work on this ticket then, also under our details, we can go back here. This is our original description and our subject. So once we do have our resolution, we'd want to make sure to come back here into the resolution and put that resolution in. We'd also want to change this status. Now as it comes in as open, and you can have your own statuses here, but there's a couple here from out of the box in process. So once you've received the ticket and are working on it, you'd probably switch this to be in process. Once you've completed the ticket, you'd come back in here and close the ticket. So that way when it's in process, people know that you actually know about it and you're working on it. And of course, after each change, you wanna make sure to go up there and click on the save icon to save the information. Now, as I said, there's many different tabs in here. Um, so we've got attachments, our journal, defects, returns, related assets. I will cover each of those in other webinars, but for this webinar I just wanted to show you how to create a new ticket and fill out the detail view and of course get your description in and get your resolution in. So this webinar has been about the SalesLogix web client and creating new tickets. Check out the other webinars that cover all the functionality for tickets. Thanks for joining me today. Have a great afternoon.